my great-great-grandparents were Ignatius Dostal and Marie Gabriel. They came from the town of Borshice Ubuklovic, located in southern Moravia. In this photograph, the quiet town appears as it did in 1908. A closer look at the photograph reveals the numbers 1908 written on a rooftop directly facing the photographer. A faint image, possibly of a man with a horse-drawn hay wagon, plows down the road. In Borshise, the Dostals farmed one and one-half acres of land where they raised fruit and made jam for sale. Today, Borshice appears as a sleepy village, nestled among the green pastures and blue skies of the Czech Republic. Nearby is the sanctuary of Velorod. The monastery and church here were established in 1205. Pope John Paul II visited in 1990. Also nearby are the birthplaces of the first president of Czechoslovakia, Thomas Mazarik, and the world-famous psychologist, Sigmund Freud. My brother John recently spent two years in Slovakia and the Czech Republic and captured many images of our beautiful and historic homeland. Moravia, like Bohemia and Slovakia, had experienced a century of rule. During most of that time, the people were oppressed. Humans first inhabited the Czech land some 600,000 years ago. More numerous remains were left by mammoth hunters about 25,000 years ago. Around 4000 BC, permanent farming communities were established in the low-lying areas. German and Celtic tribes ruled the area until the 6th century when the Slavs entered. A Celtic tribe, called the Boai by the Romans, was the origin of the term Bohemia. The Great Moravian Empire lasted from 830 till 906 and included Moravia, Western Slovakia, Bohemia, Silesia, and parts of Germany, Poland, and Hungary. In 1526, the Czech Kingdom once again came under the control of the Habsburg Empire. Prague initially became the seat of the empire, but following the Thirty Years' War, the seat was moved to Vienna. A loss at the Battle of White Mountain on November 8, 1620, sealed the fate of the Czech lands. The Habsburgs would rule for the next three centuries. During the 19th century, Prague became the center for the Czech National Revival Movement. The city quickly became a focal point for literature, journalism, and theater. The revival was not a political movement, but rather a linguistic movement, reinstating the traditional Czech language. Throughout much of Europe, anti-clericals and religious freethinkers revolted in 1848. It was during this tumultuous year, on January 26th, that my great-great-grandmother, Marie Gabriel, was born. Two years previous, Ignatius, her future husband and my great-great-grandfather was born. The Dostals lived in this house, number nine. On March 11, 1870, Marie and Ignatius had their first child and named him Joseph. The following year, in 1871, my great-grandfather Heinick was born. Over the next 22 years, Ignatius and Marie Dostal continued to have children, 11 in all. Their names were Marie, Philominka, Josephinka, Valinka, Hedvinka, Methodius, Stanislav, Vaklav, Ludmilla, Joseph, and Heinick. The family also adopted a child, Julia Lazik. In addition, Ignatius had a brother, Raymond. Raymond and his wife Anne lived in this cottage in Borshice. The house was later sold to the school director of Borshice and has since been completely remodeled. Raymond and Anne had four children, Joseph, Anthony, Mary, and Vajtek. These photographs show some of Raymond's descendants who lived around Borshice. Some still live in the area. The revolution of 1848 was soon crushed and a wave of immigration to America began. In America, the Homestead Act of 1862 offered free land to those who promised to become citizens. By the 1870s, Iowa had established an immigration office in Europe that sought to recruit new citizens. Posters such as these, written in both German and English, urged immigrants to come to Iowa and work the land. No doubt the Dostals must have been tempted by the offer of free land as well as religious and political freedoms in the New World. 
Many Czech immigrants followed the Elbe River toward the German ports of Hamburg and Bremen. Sometimes it could take weeks before transportation to America could be arranged, leaving the immigrants to take the first available sailing vessel regardless of the port for which it was destined. Popular ports included New York, New Orleans, Baltimore, Boston, and Quebec. Initial excitement must have been high as the ships finally left port, but conditions were harsh. Many ships were originally built for carrying cargo. Passengers were crowded between decks. During the 1850s, the average trip was five to eight weeks at sea. During the winter, the trip could take three months. Water was scarce, causing sanitary conditions to be primitive or non-existent. Diseases such as cholera and smallpox were common. In 1854, about 10% of the passengers would never live to see their new home. The first wave of Czech immigration occurred from 1848 to 1870. The immigrants tended to arrive in New Orleans and work their way up the Mississippi River to St. Louis. The second wave, from 1870 to 1920, used the St. Louis Bohemians as a springboard to travel further north to Chicago and the Midwest. The Dostals arrived during the second wave of immigration.